Boxing King Media in association with Boxraw. Delighted to have with me um, former cruiserweight world champion Johnny Nelson. Johnny, how are you? You know, I'm going to ask the question. Boxing King Media, Raza, Wagwan. Boxing King Media. Have you, have you switched camps? How's this working out? <laughs> but it's nice to see you. Welcome to my home. I can't believe how scared of my dogs you are. I've never seen a man run so fast. I mean, I, I come here to talk about boxing, <laughs> not about your dogs, but you have some lovely dogs, uh, you have some lovely horses, you have a lovely house. I am very happy to see you've invested wisely. I thought and you'd been here before. I thought you'd been to my pad before. No. Nah, Yorkshire, man. You see, you can't do this thing in London. Down in London, this is like, I won't get a one-bedroom bed sit for this, so that's how it rolls. Very, very lovely house. And like I said, beautiful dogs, and I can't wait to stroke them at the end before I leave. <laughs> I can't believe it. You was, if you only knew, he'd been sat outside in the car for 30 minutes telling me about move the dogs. I'm scared of dogs. I'm like, I can't, wow. My granddaughter, she rustled on them dogs. You don't understand, I'm ashamed of you. But some one of those things. Yeah, Johnny, as we said, we're here at your house. I, like I said, I appreciate you letting me in your house. Obviously, I was in the area uh, for a meeting and I pinged you and you said absolutely so. Um, listen, as I was driving, I've, I got a notification. F firstly, huge news for Sky Sports and Boxer. Mm -hmm. Liam Smith, Chris Eubank Jr. It's on, the rematch, finally. Everyone thought it wasn't going to happen, just your immediate reaction. You know, a lot of things were said previously and that of, uh, a lot of things were was set out there to, 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 to throw people off the scent. This fight was always happening. <clears throat> and these guys stuck to the guns. Boxer and Sky stuck to the guns. They knew this fight was happening. Shut up, Jeffrey. Uh, they knew this fight was happening. And um, so now it's done. Uh, back in Manchester, uh, September the 2nd. Uh, I think it's going to be a wicked fight. Um, I don't know what Chris is going to bring different. I know David Hay has been working within him camp. I know he's been working on different things. Um, um, and you know what, when we did the gloves are off, you know, he, he seriously believed, you know what, you know, you, you've got, you got lucky, it was a punch in the minute, so you got away with it, so let's see that happen again. I'll be interested to see how, how he approaches this, but I must admit, when we did the gloves are off, this man was in the eye of the storm, Liam was roasting him, Liam came down by himself, you know, no posse, and he was roasting him, and Chris, you got to give it him, he just sat there, held his, held his own, fought his own corner, and I thought, especially if you've lost the fight the way he lost, you know you're going to get ridiculed. You know you're going to get stick. Chris was on it, man. He was on it. And he really and truly fought his corner. Eddie Hearn was very vocal over the last couple of weeks um, saying that, listen, the, the fight was close and that was the fight that Conor Ben will have next if he was cleared or, or pending outcome from the board. But... Do you feel like the fact that this fight's been announced, that the, the outcome of, of Conor Ben is imminent? Um, I don't think it was ever close. Sometimes you can set the cat amongst the pigeons and get people scattering and panicking and, and making decisions they wouldn't normally make. And Eddie's the best at that. I think this fight was always happening. Um, I think it was always what if, maybe. Um, and that's all it ever was. And, and there's nothing stops Eddie from saying what he wants to say. There's nothing stops people from speculating. This fight was always happening. Uh, and now the deal's been done. In regards to Connor, you know, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Nothing's changed. And until there's a, an official uh, line on it from the British Boxing Board of Control and every, any other governing body, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Fact is fact. And, and, and listen, I'm a fan of Connor Ben. I'm not a hater of Connor Ben. But you know what? The time this has gone on, the time of the 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 arguing, this, the disputes, the what ifs, maybes, and and big news coming soon. You could have rolled out your ban and be getting on with with your career. Um, and I just hope he does that. What does Chris Junior, Chris Eubank Junior, need to do different to beat Liam Smith? I don't know. I don't know. I think Liam uh, was was warming into the fight. Well, uh, Chris was like he was stuck in betwixt in between. Did he want to box? Did he want to move? Did he want to fight? The best version of Chris is he's got an amazing engine. He's got an amazing output. That's what he does well. Uh, he tried to overcook it, tried to box it, tried to outsmart it. Brennan calls it three smart. 
So you've got two smart, when I'm too smart for you, three smart is when you aren't smart yourself. Chris outsmarted himself. Um, and so I don't know what, what he could do is do what he does best. Get the punch output there, let the shots go. Um, and that's what he wants to work on. Um, and because it's the wrong place to try something new. It's the wrong place to be indecisive when you've got a machine like, like Liam that's proved, even though he's not his best, what he's got is better than most people around. And um, so I don't know what he can change. Just coming back to Conor Ben quickly, um, Eddie said that, look, he's confident that a decision's been made. He doesn't know what that decision is yet. Um, do you have an inkling on what that decision by the board or UCAD could be? And, and we'll know hopefully in the next few days now. So it's a bit of a contradiction. He's confident that decisions are being made, but doesn't know what it is. So, so you'll know or you don't know. So, so the same source where I know the decisions are being made will, will also give you the same information because they're the decision makers. So it's speculation. Uh, and that's all it is, it's speculation. And, and again, it's getting people excited and giddy and, and, and get them to speculate. And uh, nothing's changed. I'll say it again, nothing's changed. You know, it doesn't matter what, what, what's, what's, what people are talking about, nothing's changed. Just moving away, um, Auntie Joshua, I just want to read some comments that he recently made on, yeah. on, on an interview where he said, and I quote, Robin McCracken's a, a really good coach. The only thing I'd say is look at Carl Froch's nose. He just didn't teach him uh, def defence. Rob was too committed to the Olympic team, not pros. I gave Rob my best years. Now I've got to dig deep to get them back. So I think from a public point of view, it looks like there's, there's bad blood and a fall out there. I know Anthony Joshua fully respected and respects, I think, Rob McQuack McCracken. Saying what he said, he's, 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 he's probably been training and seeing things, you know what, I didn't know this. You know, he's, he's learning new things. Rob was useful to him at the time and I think it was mutually, mutual between the two of them. Brendan Ingle always said, fighters will use you, abuse you and disuse you. And Rob McCracken did an amazing job with Anthony Joshua through the amateurs and as a professional. Uh, he took him as far as he could do uh, and, and where we took him to was far enough to to achieve what most people only dream of. So so I don't think Anthony Josh, it sounds like Anthony Josh is dissing Rob McCracken. I don't think he's, I think, again, it's, I think it's the way it's being reported. I think Andrew, Anthony Joshua knows that as far as, thinks that as far as he's concerned, Rob McCracken couldn't teach him anymore. So he needed, he needed more wisdom elsewhere. And it sounds like it's a slant, it sounds like it's a dig at, at Rob. It comes across that way. Uh, but, you know, Anthony Joshua's made the decision to say, look, I'm loyal to you, I respect you, but you couldn't give me any more. And what you did for me, I appreciate. Um, um, but I need to look, look, look on. So it's a case of how the information... I'd love to hear the interview because things can be taken out of context. It's a case of how the information is being digested by the people reporting on it. Obviously, I know Carl Froch has said a lot of things about Anti Joshua uh, over the years, so it's not like it's um, a surprise for Anti Joshua to come out to say things about Carl. But um, just just want to obviously sit, reveal what Carl said in his recent interview, Talk Sport, and he said, um, with regards to the criticism of Rob McCracken, he said he guided him to an Olympic gold medal in 2012, Olympic champion. Then he guided him to not one, but two world titles. And he's got the audacity and the disrespect to say he wasted years with Rob McCracken and he didn't teach him defense. For me, that's disgusting. It's out of order what he said about Rob McCracken. I think he'll probably regret saying what he said. I'm not going to hold it against him, but I think it's properly disrespectful to a guy that took him to Olympic title and two world titles. Again, I want to hear the interview. Did he actually say he's wasted years with him? Because in saying that, then I'm thinking, wow, you know what? You, you kind of not appreciating what you've got. And, and, and it seems like, and, and, and Carl's always been very outspoken in regards to what he thinks of Anthony Joshua. It's not a personal thing. He says it how it is. And these, the, what, what Anthony, what AJ needs around him is people that are, are, are going to speak to him straight and say how it is. So sometimes, I've, I've said one or two things that probably doesn't settle with him. But I like it where people tell me how it is. Don't both blow something, smoke up my ass. Don't be scared to tell me something in case I blow up on you. Because how am I going to learn? How am I going to develop? And that's what Carl's done. Uh, Carl might be a bit more vocal or a bit, a bit more direct with it. Because he's not very subtle in regards to, to passing on a little comment like that. But 
but I, I don't I don't knock what Carl's saying. Yeah, and uh, he could have probably padded it up differently. I don't know. And Carl's fiercely defends uh, Rob McCracken, so he'll say how it is. But I just want to hear the interview and how AJ actually said it, how it came out of his mouth. Because I don't believe AJ has... has it, it comes across like he's proper, proper dissing and disrespecting uh, Rob McCracken. But anybody, any idiot could see what Rob McCracken did for Anthony Joshua, you know, is, is unbelievable. Anthony Joshua just probably come across another coach that has shown him something that he, he just didn't know. Or, or maybe at the time wasn't mature enough to, to be able to deal with the new information he's getting. So now he's thinking, oh my God, I wish I'd have known this years ago. You learn things one step at a time. You go through good and bad experiences to get with him. He, he's had to do that. So, so again, um, again, things can be blown out of proportion. I'd just like to hear the interview. And if it is how it's reported, then shame on him. Um, that's not right, man. Uh, but I, I don't believe it is. Carl also said that for a grown man to try and personally insult another man on his physical appearance, for me, that's a bitch move. I hope he's talking about the old nose. I'm actually quite happy with this new one. Um, you know, those two, they, uh, uh, they've got a love-hate relationship, so don't worry. It's not, it's not Carl's saying all the... He'll, he'll, listen, Carl's, Carl's Carl, and, and Carl will laugh, and it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek. Uh, and I'm quite sure AJ needed to get something back and and uh, have a little dig at Carl, but you know what, they don't take those things, he don't take those things personal, Carl's Carl. Um, I think AJ, uh, if these things have come out of AJ's mouth, again, he's giving as good as he gets. So I don't blame him, I don't knock him, he's only doing what every other fighter's doing. At last he's speaking his speak. It might be wrong, it might be, um, it might be uncomfortable, it might be out of order, but at least he's being him. He's not hiding behind and saying or, or letting someone else do the talking for him. Everybody else has said outlandish things, sworn cuss, said, said so many bad things, and AJ's tried to play, the, play it down the line, and he's got all the slang. So now he's thinking, I don't care. I'm saying what I want. I'm going to talk to you like I talk to my boys. Um, and, 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 and Carl Froch is actually just saying how it is. He's not... Is it, there's no airs and graces, you know. Carl to just say how it is. He's like, yo, this is man oh man. You know, I ain't gonna kiss your ass. This is what I'm saying. If you want to take it on board, take it on board. If you don't like it, don't like it. But I'm asked a question, and that's that's really how it should be. Last week we uh, heard and got the announcement: Tyson Fury will be fighting Francis and Garnu, the former UFC heavyweight champion. Um, just want to get your thoughts and reaction to to what Frank Warren claims as uh, a game changer. Uh, well, well, again, Frank's doing his job. Frank's doing his job is, is to promote and sell his, his fight and do his job because that's what he's employed to do by, by Tyson Fury. Uh, people that, that, um, um, that don't know much about our sport, don't know, that are casual fans, you know, lines like that from Frank Warren, you know, might work and put more, a few more bums on seats, create a bit more interest. I know Frank loves our sport, loves the business of boxing. I think he's an unbelievable student of our game. And I know, I believe deep down inside, he's probably burning his gut having to try and sell that as a game changer. How? What game is it changing? The boxing game? You know, Frank's doing his job. But, but I know my man, he, 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 Frank loves boxing but he's doing his job he's, he's selling his fire and he'll fall on his sword he'll take the slag and it'll be all news in a few weeks time but he's just doing his job but I know deep down inside you know to him it's like I'm on my last legs I've got to I've got to give it you know I've got to do my job and sell this fight and get people interested and create interest Frank at one point was the, the biggest most successful big, uh, big time promoter here in the UK uh, and you understand sometimes you've got to do things that are uncomfortable at the time, but it still puts bums on seats. I'm quite sure if he does a book or in, in, in 10, 20 years' times when he talks about it, he'll say this was just one of those times. I, I get Frank, I understand where he's coming from. Johnny, a lot of ex-fighters, Tony Belly, Carl Froch, name a few present fighters, Eddie Hearn and others, have talked about their disappointment with Fury taking on Ngannou. Uh, if I look at it from the other perspective... The kind of numbers people are talking is about 40 million. For, for any fighter to be offered a fight where you can make that much money for 
a f to fight somebody who you're, you're going to win. There's a 99% chance you're going to win. No one's going to walk away, oh, are they? Oh, so, and, and this, Tyson Fury has proved he's the best fighter in the world. Tyson, Tyson Fury is now going to rinse and make as much money as possible out of this fight game. And that's really, once you've got past the point of I love the sport, you're going to make as much dollars as possible. And he'll take the stick, he'll take the hustle, he knows when he opens his mouth, cameras are on him, they listen to everything. <clears throat> so Tyson Fury's doing what he does. He's a prize fighter, he's going to make as much money as possible because when he quits in, 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 and in 20 years' time or whatever, <clears throat> and, he, and he then decides that, you know what, my kids and their kids and their kids will live, live well, live large. You know, he's done his job and he's made maximum money. That's what he's done. He's made money. Um, and, and so we love the sport. So as fighters, as fighters, 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 nah, it's not traditional, man. It's not. Tyson Fury's passed that out. He's now a celebrity. A celebrity that can fight. A celebrity that can pay ridiculous dough because, you know, he's in that position. So you can't blame him. But don't try and sell it to people like you've invented the wheel. Don't try and sell it to people like boxing start started with boxing finishes with me. Um, or you can sell it to the casuals, but don't try and sell it to people that know our game, that love our game. Do you give Francis Ngannou any chance? Nada. But I don't know if, if I'm right. So is it a two fight deal where one's in the ring and one's in the octagon? No, no. it's one fight. And okay. Tyson Fury has a rematch. Yeah. So if he was to lose to Francis Ngannou, then he can have, a, have another fight with him. Okay, so it's a game changer. If one's in the ring, one's in the octagon. It's not a game changer if it's, if, if it's in the ring and in the ring. It's not a game changer. You've got one elite fighter that's proved he's the best in the world, boxer that's proved he's the best in the world, against somebody that isn't. That's it. That's it. And, and it'll be, it, 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 listen, he's making dough. He's making dough, and that's what he's looking at. He's a prize fighter. He's a prize fighter, a successful prize fighter, and he's, he's doing his job. Okay, Johnny, I appreciate you giving me a few moments of time. I know you need to uh, pop out and do your, do your thing now. But uh, again, once again, thank you for allowing me uh, in your house. You didn't have to. And um, we'll catch up with you soon. Any final comments you'd like to make before we end? Yeah, when you go, I'm going to turn my phone on. I'm going to let the dogs go. I'm going to see you run. <laughs> and then I'm going to see what the headline is on this piece here. And if I don't like it, I'm going to put it out on social media when you're... <laughs> I can't believe a big man like you scared of the dogs. These little dogs, Jeffrey, will lick you to death. It's like, it's all right, man. It's all right. Shh. Johnny, I love you, but just don't let the dogs out. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> all right, man. Johnny Nelson, thank you for speaking to Boxing King Media.